From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Jungle Odds. New York City is a long way from equatorial Africa, and the maze of Manhattan's teeming streets are far different from the tangled growth of Tarzan's jungle. But in some ways, they're closely akin... For in the city, too, man pits his strength and his wits against the odds of life. For a good many years, Jerry Mulqueen had concentrated his wits on the odds to be encountered at the racetracks and the gambling casinos of the world. And of late, his luck had been all bad. Gambling czar Vic Moratti knew about Mulqueen's financial state. It was his business to know such things. The way I get it, you're broke. And you've already borrowed from every easy touch in town. Yes, I borrowed a few bucks, but my luck's bound to change. How many losers can I pick in a row? Well, according to the law of average, I've got to pick a winner this time. The odds against my picking another loser... You and your rods. Well, now, look, Marathi. After all the money I've spent with you, my credit ought to be good for one last bet. Just one little bet. That's all I'm asking credit for. Just one chance to get even. What happens if you lose again? Well, you'll collect. I, I swear it. I've got money at home. It's just... Well, I, I can't get my hands on it unless I'm really desperate. Now, well, you'll be plenty desperate if you try to Welsh on a bet with Vic Moratti. If I owe a guy money, I'll follow him to the ends of the earth to pay it off. But if someone owes me dough, I'll go twice that far to collect. You understand that? Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, now, how about it? Is my credit good for one bet? I'll give you 24 hours credit for one bet. You call it. Good. Um, uh, what... Uh... What are you quoting on happy times in the fort? Twelve to one. Yeah, but take a little friendly tip, Odds. That nag will still be running when they're cleaning up the park. Don't call me Odds. Don't be telling me how to bet. I've got this one figured. Okay. But if you're making a bet on happy times, you better get it down. It's almost post time now. Well, uh, 5,000 on happy times. On the nose. (laughs) 5,000 on that plate. You better have the money at home, Mr. Mulqueen. Is it a bet? Yeah, yeah, it's up there. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Never mind appreciating anything. Just get it up if you lose. Be ashamed to make an orphan out of that sweet little girl you've got. Say, they uh, they must be running by now. How about turning the radio on? We'll get the results over the wire service in a few minutes. The guys over at the crap table don't like the radio blasting. Oh, j- just turn it on, Low. I've got to hear what's happening. <laughs> okay. Is it 12 to 1? 12 times 5,000 bucks is 6. Hey, don't be spending your money yet. That ice wagon horse hasn't got a glimmer. Your five thousands on ice, so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> happy times. Uh, the, the radio, it's warming up now. And if they're happy, somebody's fortune half a lane. Smart money, Rubicon, and happy times. Oh, come on. Smart money moving up on the outside. Rubicon and happy come times on. juggling for rail position. Come on, come and on. And at the turn, it's smart money. Somebody's come on, fortune, happy, happy times. times. Gold dust, Rubicon, and Walter's folly. Going into the stretch, it's smart money and happy times. They're neck and come neck. On, and happy and times. It's Smart money. Nope. Smart money, the winner by oh. one quarter of a length. Happy times, second by a length. And somebody's fortune is third. Oh, and... oh no. It what did you turn be... it off for? I wanted to hear the track player prices. Well, turn it back on if you want to. I'm going anyhow. I expect to see you tomorrow with the money, Mr. Rods McQueen. <laughs> Patty, darling, where are you? Here I am, Daddy. I was just fixing dinner. What's wrong? Where's our nest egg? Where have you got it hidden? Well, you told me I wasn't to tell you that it was for a rainy day. Well, this is it. (laughs) Rainy day. This is a cloudburst. But you said even if you begged me to tell you where it was, I wasn't... Where is it, Patty? I've got to have it. Now, come on, where is it? Tell me. Over there, in the back of Mother's picture. (laughs) Oh, here it is. Fifty, hundred, two hundred, three, five hundred dollars. Patty, where's the rest of it? That's all there is, Daddy. 
Oh, it couldn't be. There's got to be more. I remember one day at Monte Carlo, I handed you 2000 At that time in Havana, it must have been six or seven grand that time. And uh, then you had that run of bad luck at Saratoga. And after that, down at Belmont. I didn't want to give it to oh, you, but... Five hundred dollars. And I owe five thousand. Oh, I'm not worried about myself, but what'll happen to you, Patty, darling? What'll happen to me? What do you mean, Daddy? Oh, oh forget it now. Nothing's going to happen to you. <laughs> Patty, now they teach you geography in school. What country is the furthest from here? Furthest? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Africa. Africa? That's it! Way into the interior. Oh, he'd never think of looking for me there. Even if he did, the odds would be a million to one of his finding us. We're going to Africa? If we can find a freighter or something that'll take us there for 500 bucks. But I don't think I want to go to Africa. I've read all about those animals and cannibals and snakes. Oh, come, come now, Patty, darling. We've been through a lot together. You're not going to worry about a few little things like that. Why, I'd lay eight to one we'll never even see an animal or a savage. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to our exciting story of Jungle Odds. Tarzan was, of course, unaware of the existence of Jerry Mulqueen and his small daughter. He knew nothing of their arrival at Dakar or of their sudden panicked flight into the jungle for he was many hundreds of miles from Dakar on his way to the Punya village. Suddenly, Tarzan's nostrils quivered, and he stared down from the upper level of jungle growth. Below him, Torgo, the small native boy he loved like a son, cowered in fear as a hungry jackal bared its fangs and crouched low. There was no time for Tarzan to raise an arrow to his bow. Instead, he plunged down with incredible speed, and almost before he reached the ground, his powerful hands encircled the animal's throat. And as they tightened, the body of the wolf-like creature gave a convulsive spasm, and it lay dead. Tarzan. Tarzan. I am very angry with you, Torgo. Torgo not mean to wander from Kral? Oh, I've almost given up hope of teaching you to remain within the village. But if you wander into the jungle, you must be prepared to defend yourself. Now, where are the bow and arrows I made for you? Torgo lose. You lost them? Oh, that was careless of you, Torgo. Come on, we'll, we'll go into the village and see if we can find them. Not lose that way. Not what way? What are you talking about? Me lose bow and arrow to other punya boy. Torgo say he can run faster. Korakulo say he run faster. If Torgo win, he get Korakulo's arm bracelet. So, you put the bow and arrows as a stake in a contest. Oh, gambling is very bad, Torgo. Gambling? No, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Help me skin the hide from the jungle wolf here. I'll take it to your mother. Mama Nagama will be pleased with it, for its red color is most attractive. Yes, Mama Nagama like, but Tyson... Mm -hmm. Now what's wrong? Torgo not help skin hide. Torgo lose his knife also. Another wager? Deal. Torgo say he's stronger than Yamariki. Oh. All right, I'll, I'll skin the animal myself. Only the next time I hear of you... What's wrong, Tarzan? The scent of Tarmangani. A white man. And the scent is close. We hide? No. We'll stand quietly until we see what... <laughs> Why, it's only a small girl. Little white girl, same size Torgo. Jumbo Kijana. Uh, are you cannibals? No, we're not cannibals. If, if we were, you might be in serious trouble. What in the world are you doing wandering all alone through the jungle? Well, I'm not really alone. My father's about a mile back, along that trail over there. He's trying to hang on to a vine bridge. It broke in two just after I got across. The Punya Bridge over Kayoko Canyon? He's only holding on by one slender little vine, and it must be thousands of feet down to the rocks below. Torgo, take the girl to the village with you. Oh, please, please hurry to my daddy. If there's any possible way, I'll save him for you, little white girl. Tarzan sped along the elephant trail like Usha the wind, for he knew that once the vine bridge had dried and broken, a single strand of twisted liana would not long support the weight of a man's body, and below were jagged rocks as sharp as bayonets. Within a matter of minutes, Tarzan had reached the narrow gorge at the mouth of Kayoku Canyon. In the distance, he could see a slender figure dangling like a marionette on a silken thread. 
But as he grew closer, the marionette became a man. A man whose eyes were closed, whose face was taut and frightened. Great beads of perspiration dripped from his forehead, and it was clear that his strength was waning rapidly. Hold on. Hold on for another minute. I... I try. There's no place for you to get any footing. I know. But I have an idea. J- just hold on. Did you... Did you see Patty? My... My little girl. Yeah, she's safe. That's all I... I care about. Take care of her. Now, one more second. If, if I can just swing out on this vine, I, I may be able to reach you. No sense risking your life, too. Don't try. Ready now? Watch out. Here I come. Huh? I'm, got you. Now, hang on. Oh. Oh. We made yeah. it. What a stunt. What a terrific stunt. Well, the odds of you're hauling me back to the edge here were one in a thousand. Ah! What's the idea? Making that horrible cry. It is... It is the sign of victory among the apes of the tribe who raised me. Apes? Yes, and we both achieved a victory over nature just now. You could say that again. I would have given a hundred to one. No one would even have found my body down there. Who are you, anyhow? I am called Tarzan, and I'm a man of the jungle. If you were more experienced in jungle ways, you would have known that bridges made from liana are not trustworthy during the dry season. Many of these bridges are years old, and when they become dry, they're most dangerous. Well, I lay eight to five that the weather had nothing to do with that bridge given away. Huh? What do you mean? I don't know how he got ahead of us, but he must have. He knew which way we were headed, and he set a booby trap for Patty and me. He probably cut some of the strands that held that bridge. Uh, yes, it's possible that an enemy might have done that. Let me look at the freight ends. It's easy to see if the vines were cut. I can tell without looking. It's a sort of trick Mick Marathi would pull. Although I didn't think he, he'd want to kill little Patty, too. The vines were not cut. I think it's time you told me who you are and why you imagine you have an enemy in the jungle. <sighs> My name's Jerry Mulqueen. I'm an American. I made an enemy in the States. My daughter and I landed in the car a few weeks ago. I figured we'd be safe there. Yes. Well, we hadn't been there more than a day or two before I caught sight of him in the marketplace. I didn't think he'd see me, but he must have. He came to the little hotel where we were staying, started asking questions. Of whom? He spoke to a native boy that worked there. The kid didn't know the name of this enemy, of course, but he described him to a T. Go on. Well, there was only one thing to do. Plunge into the jungle. Get into it so deep he'd never find me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, he's been on our trail ever since we started out. And I'm exhausted. Yes, I can see you are. Well, I shall take you back to the Punya village where Patty's waiting for you. The village? That must be where we saw the smoke coming from. Saved my life, I guess. I told Patty to head in that direction. Oh, before we get started, I'd, I'd like to ask you one question. How do you know you're still being followed? Have you seen your enemy in the jungle, or have you heard him? No, but I feel it in my bones. I don't have to see or hear Vic Barati to know that he's after me. To know that he'll never give up until he gets my money or my life. And I haven't got any money. Try to get some sleep, Daddy. I'll sleep as soon as Tarzan gets back. Toto will make nice bed of boughs for white men and small girl. Why do you keep calling me a small girl? I'm bigger than you are. Not bigger. We stand up straight, back to back. Torgo bigger, I bet. I never want to hear that word bet again. Tell me, Torgo, when do you think you'll be back? He go look for bad men you imagine chase you. Maybe take long time for Tarzan to find. Unfortunately, I haven't imagined them. Unless I'm dead wrong, they can't be far away. Then Tarzan back soon. I think I hear now. I can't hear anything. Torgo has best ears in village. Better than anyone I... Well, Torgo's ears are good. Ah, see... Jumbo, my new friend. Jumbo, Tarzan. What did you find out? Did you find any trace of them? I came upon a large safari of white men a few miles from here. One of them might have been the man you described. See, I was right. It wasn't my imagination. I don't know. I didn't enter the camp, although I drew close enough to hear their conversation. It, it seemed like a hunting party, for there were many porters and gun bearers. Don't try to hide anything from me, Tarzan. I've got to know for sure. I, I can't go on this way. I've got to know. What were they talking about? 
Well, the conversation was concerned chiefly with a man they called Odds. That's me. That's what they call me. It's my nickname, Odds Queen. Well, then I'm afraid you were right. They are hunting for you. In just a moment, the conclusion of our exciting story of Tarzan. Yes, Torgo, that's the story I wrung from Mr. Mulqueen. He's fleeing from a gambling debt he couldn't pay. Gambling? Much bad. Very bad. You start wagering a top or some marbles or, or bow and arrows, and you end up with your own life as the stake. Torgo, not do that. Torgo, never gamble again. Torgo, promise. Well, I hope this is one promise you'll keep. Shall we go and help Mama Nagama fix breakfast for our guests now? Torgo, carry food to him where white man and small girl sleep. Good. Now come along just in case the load's a little heavy for you. Darvin! Darvin, it's Patty! I've got to talk to you! Come in! What? What's the matter, child? Little girl is cry. Daddy's gone. But no one could have entered the camp and taken him. I, I would have sensed the coming of strangers. Oh, no one took him. He ran away. Sometime in the night, he must have pinned this note near my bed and then just disappeared into the jungle. At first, when I woke up, I didn't know he was gone. And then I looked over to where he'd been. Yeah, let me see the note, will you? Thank you. <laughs> What'd he say? He's leaving Patty with us, Torgo. He's decided she'll be better off without him. But I won't be. I want my daddy. Oh, hush, hush, Kajana. <laughs> Kajana mean little girl. You've got to find him, Tarzan. You've got to bring him back. If he's still alive. Well, if the two of you manage to get this far, he's he's probably still all right. He doesn't see things along the trail. I was the one who always saw the animals and snakes and things in time to warn him. He may even be dead by now. I'll leave right away, Patty. You, you stay here with the punyas. I promise you that I'll bring him back to you, if it's humanly possible. Where the native village melted into the aboriginal jungle, there were signs that told the direction Jerry Mulqueen had taken. And they also revealed that he had left in the dead of night, that he had many hours start. And as Tarzan followed the twisted trail, the story of Jerry's tribulations became evident. Here, he had detoured for many miles to avoid a herd of cape buffaloes. There, he had narrowly avoided death at the hands of a giant python. And in still another place, there were signs that he had fallen into a deep pit and injured himself crawling out. Finally, there were indications that he had been taken prisoner by a band of marauding Zulu warriors. Tarzan continued on until he overtook the savage band of blacks, and as he entered their camp, they bared their sharply filed teeth at him like a pack of angry beasts. He's Tarzan, Lord of Jungle. Tarzan, try to take you prisoner. Him, boy. Many times you free prisoner we take, not do again. I shall take this prisoner from you and all others you attempt to enslave and in torture. Now, now, where is he? He in Hima. But you try to take, we kill him and you. Come on, you, know, you, know, you outnumber me badly, but if I go to the land of spirits, I shall not go alone. If one of you attempts to keep me from rescuing the white man, I will not hesitate to use my knife. You not scare us, jungle lord. All right. Now we'll see how brave you are with a knife held against your back. Not kill me, me great chief. If you are a great chief, your men will obey your orders. Tell them to bring the white man from the Hema. Bring white man from Hema. The next time you take a prisoner, I may not stop at words. Tarzan. Oh, Tarzan. You saved my life again. It isn't worth saving. Perhaps I agree with you. But your daughter has other ideas. Now, start for the elephant trail. I'll, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Tell them not to move an inch. Not move. You not do what Tarzan say. He kill me, your chief. Now hurry, Odds Queen. Where... Where are we? I don't blame you for being confused here in this upper level of jungle growth. Now, this has all been too much for me, Tarzan. I I'm ready to give up now. And you want me to carry you to the ground and turn you over to the man you've been fleeing from? Oh, I guess we've lost Marathi by this time. He and his party are less than a mile's distance from here. Marathi? 
He's near here. If your eyes were keener, you could see the movement of the brush as the safari approaches us. But I, I can't let Marathi get me. You said you were ready to give up. Oh, I guess a man says a lot of things he doesn't mean. Tarzan, all I want is a chance to get back to civilization. Patty and I can take a little house somewhere and I'll go to work. I won't gamble another cent. I'll save the money I owe Marathi and I'll square myself someday. Only I've got to get away from him now. And he mustn't know where I'm going. Well, if you're really ready to give up gambling, I'll help you. We'll circle back to the Punya village to get Patty and, and then I'll attempt to get you to Cairo or Cape Town. Foreigners can get jobs there, and those cities are so large and intricate, Marathi will have little chance of finding you there. Cairo, Cape Town, a chance for the future. But first, we must take care of the present. It will not be easy to reach the Punya village undetected, for Marathi's safari is large, and it's obvious he's engaged men well-versed in the ways of the jungle. All that day, Tarzan and Jerry Mulqueen traveled through the jungle. They doubled back along their own trail. They walked up creeks so that their scent might be erased. And in those sections where it was heavily wooded, they traveled by the upper level so that no hint of their passage might be left on the ground. But despite every trick at Tarzan's command, the safari of Vic Marathi continued to press them. Now the only course left open to Tarzan and his weary traveling companion was to abandon caution and hurry to the Punya village. They would stop but an instant to get Patty, and then they would continue east. If they could not outwit their enemy, perhaps they could outdistance him. Hurry, Mr. Mulqueen, we're almost there. Uh, my leg's bothering me. I injured it, climbing out of that pit last night. I know. Shall I carry you the rest of the way? No, no. I make it. You need your strength to carry Patty. You missed the gate to the village right here, isn't it? Yes. Well, you won't have to stop here long. How far is it to Cape Town? A long, long way. I wonder where everyone is. Usually there are many people about the gate. Oh, there they are, about the council fire. That's, that's strange. It's not the time for any ceremonies that I know of. Uh, I don't see Patty. Oh, oh, she's probably watching whatever's going on at the council fire. What, what is going on? He good? Tranquilo, Henry. Hey, you're good. Uh, the deal. Hey, Torgo, good. What are you doing? Hey, that looks like a dice game. Dice. Torgo. Not talk to me now, Tarzan. Torgo, much busy. You're not too busy to talk to me. It's important. We play game Patty teach us. She learned game by watching her baba. Now Torgo is best at game. Win back bow and arrows and many things from boys and men of tribe. Yes, we'll talk about this later. Where is Patty now? She and him of Mama Nagama. Oh, it's over there, Mr. Mulqueen. You better get her. Patty, help Mama Nagama. Patty! Patty! Oh, Daddy, Daddy! Tarzan saved you. You've come back. Uh, to get you, darling. But we've got to leave right away. I'm afraid it's too late now. Vic Marathi! Coming right straight into the village. Well, I won't let him get me. I'll... No uh, sense in running. You can't hide from your past forever. Are you right here, man? I see the guy I'm looking for. Well, Mr. Rods Queen, I've sure chased you a long way. Tarzan's right. There's no sense in running. Go ahead. Do anything you want. All I want to do is hand you 60 grand. You... You want to hand me $60,000? Unless the expenses for all the men I had to hire to find you. Not to mention my passage over here and all that sort of stuff. What? I... I don't get it, Vic. Well, if you wouldn't have turned off the radio that day, or if you would have picked up a newspaper before you hightailed it off, you'd have found out they disqualified smart money. What? Yeah, and declared happy times a winner. At 12 to 1 yet. Happy times... You've been chasing me just to give me my winnings? I once told you that if Vic Marathi owes a guy money, he'll follow him to the ends of the earth to pay you off. I guess I sure proved my point this time. Oh. Well, oh. Mr. Mulqueen, I imagine Patty and you will be heading back to the States now, huh? You're not kidding. And I guess you won't mind getting rid of us. It may be more peaceful here for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. You won't have as much excitement as I brought you for a long, long time. Torgo, take that bet. And he lay eight to five odds. <laughs> We'd like you to remain with us for another few moments so that we may tell you about our next exciting story of Tarzan. The jungle hurricane lashed savagely at the mammoth airliner that attempted to escape from its fury. But one motor faltered, and then another. And in the end, the mighty monarch of the air was reduced to a mass of tangled wreckage. But Captain Lawrence and Tarzan suspected that the elements had not been entirely to blame. And they uncovered an amazing story that was not reported in the newspaper articles headed, All Presumed Dead. 
Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, All Presumed Dead, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle. (laughs) 